thank you. And thank you for being here with me today. Uh, we are going to talk about fostering intercultural communication in the ELT classroom. And we're going to talk about some practical activities. Okay, I would like you to think of your classroom needs. What do you need in your classroom? Of course, we have the academic uh, and scholar answer to integrate personal and social competencies. Oh, it sounds good. Also, to develop communicative competencies. Hmm, it sounds excellent. But then we have another need to foster appreciation of cultural differences and diversity. Oh my God, what's that? What are you meaning with that? Okay, here we have two different uh, issues. The first one, we are in a multicultural classroom, we as ELT teachers. Maybe you think you teach a very homogeneous classroom. For example, all your students are from the same city, the same country. But have you ever thought of their backgrounds or their, of their own uh, family uh, composition? Well, that is giving them a different culture. Or think about the age. Imagine, uh, we are very young, of course. We are under 30. So we have a very different culture to the ones over 40. Mm -hmm. So that makes our classroom a multicultural classroom. And that's the issue. How to uh, foster that appreciation of diversity and at the same time to foster the interest and curiosity on languages and intercultural communication. So we have that need. What are we going to do? Of course, we have some negative reactions. When we are in a classroom and, okay, we as human beings, we tend to think that we are right, the others are wrong. Hmm. We think that uh, maybe the other people from the other part of the city, the other part of the country, the other university is wrong and we're right. Mm -hmm. If we have that idea, we cannot interact with the other. Yes, because we are centered on ourselves. And what is the, the uh, consequence of that? Our affective filter is increased. And of course, we cannot learn. How can I learn if I don't trust you? If I don't believe what you're saying? Of course, this is leading to discrimination. And remember something very important. We learn not only from the almighty teacher. No, we have our partners. We are creating a collaborative learning environment in a classroom, especially in a language classroom. Because you know what? The most important thing in a language classroom is communication. And what is our most, uh, what, what is our favorite topic when we are talking, when we want to communicate? Hmm, think about that. Our favorite topic is ourselves. Wow. So, is there a solution to this problem? of uh, what can we do to develop learning and effective language learning in our schools, universities, and language centers? Of course, we have institutions. I am sure that in your countries, you have different language institutions that are fostering intercultural communication. For example, as Franco mentioned, you have the uh, US Embassy, the British Council, or something similar. Mm -hmm. We have academic networks. Right now, we are sharing different cultures. We are sharing different uh, points of view. We are sharing different cosmovisions. And we, as teachers, also, we have that power. Mm -hmm. Remember, who has the control in our classroom? The teachers with the students, of course. Don't forget that. Students are an important part of the learning process. And sometimes we tend to forget that. And the language learners themselves, they are empowered, well, if we allow them, they are empowered of their own learning processes. And the intercultural communication is part of that learning process. And remember, we are facilitators, we are guides. We are not the almighty teachers with all the answers. No, definitely not. So, is there a solution? Yes, of course, we have different solutions. Of course, today we are going to talk about the one that is closer to us our classrooms. Intercultural uh, communication demands respect. That is the number one. 
oh, in fact, you are going to say Gabby, but every single uh, personal communication uh, involves respect, of course, and tolerance. One thing is, okay, I respect your point of view. Mm, you're wrong. Oh, wait. Also, tolerance is another part to develop. Knowledge. Remember, we have to go beyond stereotypes. Mm -hmm. If I say, think of U.S., what is the first word that uh, comes to your, to your mind? Mm. And then, if I say England, maybe the Queen and her beautiful little doggies. And if I say Australia, ah, kangaroos and koalas, cool. But is that real knowledge of the other? Or are we talking about stereotypes? So we as teachers and as learners, we have to be aware of that. If we are only talking about stereotypes, and as Rob said, oh, gringo, you cannot pronounce my name, are we? having real and effective communication, that's the point where we, as teachers and as learners, we can promote real and effective communication in the intercultural communication setting. Intercultural communication implies the people, that's the important part, no countries, no stereotypes, people like us and also based on the culture they belong to. We, in Latin America, we have many things in common, but also we have different uh, parts of our identity that made us unique. So check that intercultural communication includes the gender, sexualities, generations, workplaces, and professions. So we, as teachers, have certain culture. And we have to take that into account when we are talking with, uh, to people from different uh, professions, generations. I'm sure that you do not talk the same to your grandmother or to your kids. Mm -hmm. Different culture, different way of communicating. The intercultural communication is different uh, too. What can we do in our classrooms? Okay, to use reflection activities. The important part is not to focus on language. Yes, present simple, cool, habits and routines. What is that telling us about the culture or in its uh, added context? Mm -hmm. Problem solving, problems regarding the use of the language in different contexts. Uh, when you are very, very hungry and you're asking for food, is it the same if you go to McDonald's or if you go to your grandmother's house? Hmm, we have different contexts, we have to think and solve the problems. Of course, some tasks based on authentic text. Yes, it's check research. Oh, that's, that's an issue sometimes. Okay, I'm going to use Wikipedia. Well, yes, and is that reliable? Okay, think of the intercultural communication there. Yes, it may, maybe Wikipedia could be very valuable for some uh, settings, but not for academic research. So the analysis of that, it's going to help our students and ourselves to create better intercultural communication. Also, to re reformulate authentic texts. Okay, we have the information. What about recovering it? What about checking it, not only as a text that we have to check in English class, but what is its purpose, its audience? Mm -hmm. Of course, we can use all these activities in a portfolio where we have the self-evaluation tools and also some cultural reflections. What is a song telling us about the place where we sing it? Is it the same to have the video of the song or to listen to it? So those uh, critical reflections could be part of the portfolio. Of course, we can use learning strategies. And as, at the same time, we can help our students to be independent, autonomous, to self-evaluate and self-regulate their learning processes, and to appreciate the other, to be in contact with other culture, and not to have an idea of culture as something, uh, something weird over there in limbo. No, to have an idea of culture as part of a person's identity. 
If you check, the activities are very simple. The material is accessible and easy to find. Now with internet, we can find songs, we can find texts, we can find newspapers. And it is in context. Of course, they review previous knowledge and they have the resources according to our students' needs and context. The important part is that they promote reflection and intercultural communication. Well, we can conclude that now to speak English, it's very important in our world. And the cultural competences are an essential part of this learning. Mm -hmm.